Hi, today we will study what is dense layer, why we use dense layer, and how we use dense layer in TensorFlow 2. Previously, we studied how single node is working. If you have a close look, the node is just has three steps. First, multiplying inputs with weight. Second, adding bias. Thirdly, applying activation function and return the output. Here picture, I use the sigmoid as activation function and I will keep use this node for dense layer explanation. Dense layer is just a set of nodes. When inputs come to dense layer, a dense layer provides inputs to all nodes in it, thus providing all outputs to the next layer at once as well as all. This is an example of two nodes dense layer and this is an example of three nodes dense layer. There are many reasons why we use dense layer. Most importantly, we use dense layer to put the data in the different dimension. Let's understand it with easy example. Before speak about the dense layer, let's keep in mind that one node can draw one decision boundary. Therefore, two nodes can draw two decision boundary. Previously, we made AND and OR operation with one single node. The reason why we could implement AND and OR operation with just one single node is because these no operation just need one decision boundary to classify O or X, and one node can draw one decision boundary as you can see from this picture. However, we cannot implement XOR operation with one single node because, as you can see from this picture, one decision boundary cannot classify O or X clearly. Since one node draws one decision boundary, at least we can draw two decision boundaries using two nodes. Let's say first node is Z1 and the second node is Z2. And since uh, each node output is sigmoid function output, we can say if the output value is greater than 0 0.5, the output is true or the output is false. And you can find I marked one side from the decision boundary is true and the other side is false here. For better understanding, I put the table having the output from Z1 and Z2. So now let's have one other coordinate in which uses Z1 and Z2 as dimensions. You can see the right side chart where the Z1 and the Z2 are axes. There are two O's are overlapped and the two axes are scattered. In order to classify O and X from this dimension, we need one more decision boundary. That being said, we need one more node in this dimension. Then we can classify XOR dataset clearly. Awesome, we will implement it using TensorFlow 2 soon in this video. To sum up, in order to draw two decision boundary, we need one dense layer having two nodes, then we need one another dense layer having just one node to classify data point in first dense layer's dimension. I believe you can understand even easier with this picture. I visualize how the first and the second dense layer draws decision boundary. And here is a TensorFlow 2 code to make XOR inputs and labels respectively. And here is the code where I make first dense layer with two nodes for which takes two dimensional input data. And you can see the second dense layer has one single node for one decision boundary on first dense layer's dimension. And here you can find I use the gradient descent for the optimization and the cross entropy as a loss function. Finally, we got a 100% test result from our TensorFlow model with two dense layer. You also can print each dense layer node weight and bias. Just make sure the number of columns are the number of nodes in the dense layer and the number of the rows are the numbers of the weights in the node. And here you can find the second dense layer's weight and bias value as well. Dense layer also very useful for last layer of the classification model. Since n nodes, dense layer outputs n outputs. This is an example of classifying mnist 10 digits. 
by having 10 nodes than the layer at the last layer, we can use the greatest output value index as a model's prediction. However, since the dense layer's node output are not normalized, normally we apply softmax function at the last dense layer so the outputs to be normalized. Now you can see the summing up of each node output is 1, so we can use the each node value as confidence for each number and we can use just the great, greatest output value as a model's prediction. This is all for this video and you can always practice XOR going this uh, link. Thanks for watching and I will come back to next video with MNIST digit classification.